Hello, mate. I'll just start my video. Hey, how are you, mate? Doing good. Yeah, I'm well. Hello, hello. Hello, Vince. How are you, buddy? All right. I'm good. Um, what Hello, I'm well. I'm well, guys. I'm very well. Sorry, it's um, I don't have my headphones. I, I I forgot my headphones. So sorry if that's going to be a bit annoying. No, it's all right. It's all right. So uh, Nathan, uh, that is John, uh, who is uh, from the uh, uh, the CEO of the uh, uh, tournament, which is known as Maratha Cricket League MCL T20, which is uh, one of the um, you know elite leagues which is going to happen in Western region of India. Uh, I would say I would nice. say the entire India. And uh, I am Said Fala. Uh, I'm uh, the head coach of Fala Cricket Academy, uh, board of advisory for MCL and board of advisory for IFSC. I believe uh, you would be aware of uh, Sean Williams. Uh, yes. Yeah. So Sean Williams happens to be our mutual connection pertaining to him. So I would be uh, cool. you know, discussing uh, about that program after once we are done with this. So uh, a quick uh, brief introduction from you, Nathan, because I do understand that there is a lot mm. of, uh, you know, information which is available online and everywhere yeah. else. But I would yeah. like to hear it from you as to how is it going with you since the time you started cricket and now with your Spin Bowling Academy, which is a great initiative and I really admire that. Yeah, thank you. Look, uh, firstly, thanks for the connection, guys. Look, I hope you guys are, are safe over over there. And, uh, you know, look, in Australia, just recently, it just started to spread a little bit more down in Victoria. And, um, you know, look, it's it's amazing that the game, you know, look, it, whatever's going on in the world, it's also given up people like us a chance a bit more to connect, you know. So I guess that's, you know, devil's advocate of everything that's going on. But, you know, look, for myself... I grew up absolutely loving cricket. You know, I played it my, my whole life uh, from the age of about five or six. And I, and I grew up as a, as, a, as a batsman growing up. So I was about the age of 16, 17. I was still playing uh, Australian 19 as a batsman. And I bowled, so I was sort of like a bowling, at that stage, a bowling all-rounder. Um, throughout my career, I had a lot of ups and downs as a spin bowler. You know, I played uh, first in Queensland uh, in, a, in a place that's, not real receptive to spin bowling, you know, the Gabba as a finger spinner, you know, like I had a lot of flaws in my action growing up, but it was very hard to, you know, there wasn't as much coaching or anything like that growing up, you know, so uh, that, that was a really tough thing. One thing led to another, I moved to New South Wales, got a lot, got a lot of good coaching there, played on a good spinning wicket, I worked on with a, a couple of very good um, spinning coaches down there. My career, you know, look, I, I probably didn't continue as much as I would have liked. I had a few injuries. You know, mentally, I was very fried. I had a really tough time throughout my career just dealing with the pressure of the media. You know, sort of following Shane Warne a little bit. I, I wasn't exactly after him, but, you know, following in his footsteps, you know, everyone expected me to spin the ball a metre and take wickets all the time. And, um, you know, look, my, my career, it was steady. You know, like it was nothing outstanding, average low 30s with the ball. But, you know, look, I think after I'd sort of moved on and then Gaz has come on board and, you know, Gaz is world class now. You know, it was nice to see them, the selectors and, and the crowd and the median just sort of take a backward step and, and trust that we are good enough at the end of the day. And, you know, we're not going to be a Shane Warne or, or, or whatever, the Murley or, or someone like that. Um, and then, you know, look, the reason why I started the academy was really the fact that there's no spin bowling coaches really around Australia. We've got John Davison in Queensland, ex-Australian, uh, who I rate very highly as a coach. Um, Shri, who's a coach, you know, in Australia. Craig Howard, who sort of run the, the spin program at Cricket Australia. Um, and what I found was it was really hard for me to speak to everyone. You know, I, I want to be able to help out as many as people as I can, you know, whether it's facing spin bowling, uh, bowling spin, all that sort of thing. But I've only got a a certain amount of hours but in the day and that's why I created a lot of this academy and the online courses so that I can at least sort of get my I guess my knowledge out there the best that I can and try and pass on that you know that consistent message to anybody that needs help and it's very very busy at the moment you know look it's it's been you know I've been very lucky that um, you know parents and athletes you know they want to be uh, worked with me on that and you know look it's going all around the world at the moment, bits and pieces, and only going to continue to grow further. And I'm really enjoying it. All right, great, great. So uh, just off, out of curiosity, Nathan, I do understand, mate, that 
some part of your you know academy module is connected to technology i did see some kind of screenshots of some technology being involved so i i really i'm really you know interested and keen about technology getting involved in cricket so can you elaborate more about those technology factors which we are looking at yeah so i i use a pro, one program called huddle so huddle is just uh, an opportunity so when i videotape or you know video on a camera not videotape on i put it up on huddle the athlete has access to it and we communicate via you know like i might say look you got to got to work on you know part a part b whatever it needs to be we communicate that way that feed is always there so that's just a, a nice and easy basic one you know i can share videos on there and that sort of thing that's that's that platform and, and i've just started using in the last probably six weeks a program called ludimus um, and i find that program at the moment very well advanced and it's a program that i've i'm trialing for the first three months you know just trying to get used to something else and what that program does it cuts out all the noise so if you're uh giving throwdowns for an hour it'll cut out all the bits and pieces that you're not actually facing a ball so instead of having 60 minutes of footage it might just be 23 minutes or something like that cuts out all the the other bits and pieces of not throwing so that's one aspect um, the feedback you can can provide is also voice enabled as well so i can just instead of always typing that spits out to, to the athlete and you can actually do a program in um, Ludamis via, um, are you still there because you've screened? Oh, there you are, yeah. Because um, do a screen, you can actually do a, a program via PDF. Um, so that spits it out back to the athlete. So then they know exactly what's going on, you know. So and and their, their, their AI is, is amazing. And I, and I really like their program at the moment. Great. So you're saying that Ludamis is also involved in that into your program? That, that's something that I'm sort of using externally. So my program that I did, so I did all these online courses. I did all my videos, um, you know, batting against in bowling, all that sort of stuff. I uploaded them um, so that the way that I wanted to do it was, you know, look, so generally I'm working with kids who only just started, kids who, majority of my work is probably kids who've been bowling spin for, you know, five years. So I, I sort of call them like an intermediate spinner. So that'd be 67% of my work working with young kids. So I created three different courses of leg spin and off spin, beginner for kids who are just starting or even you know, older people who are just starting. And it goes over basics, how to hold it, you know, leg spin, a couple of different basic drills, a few quizzes, alignment, just the stuff that I would talk about in a session, in two sessions. You know, it's like very, very basic stuff, but it's the same message that I would pass on all around the world. It'd be no different, you know, same with, I've watched a lot of other people talking about, it's exactly the same message, but I put it on a course Intermediate, I start to go into field placings, how you communicate with your captain, you know, off spin, I might start to talk about bowling wide on the crease and why you would do that, bowling in different scenarios. And then advanced is probably more the first grade cricketers, you know, and that type of cricketer who wants to, first 11 cricketers who want to progress. You know, there's some pretty tougher drills, but the drills are based around, you know, say T20 cricket, how do you, how do you practice bowling a Yorker or how do you practice bowling back of a length? specific sort of stuff for that and then they've got that program for life and they just complete it like um, a normal start the course once you finish that you're 10 percent through you know so the course itself like you could watch it in you know in two or three hours like it doesn't really matter but the idea is that they've got that course there for life and they can always refer back to you know what did nathan say about his alignment you know or what you know that sort of stuff and that's what i really wanted to pass on right so um uh how is the attraction? I believe it's been approximately 52 or 53 days of your initiation of your academy. That's what I've followed very so good. far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good, very good. So uh, how how's the attraction been so far? Look, it's been outstanding, to be honest. I, I set up a like a, a mentoring program as well for young kids. So, um, you know, I've got 15 young kids that I mentor throughout the year. And the idea of that is I actually have devised a program for them specifically. So if there's nothing majorly, so we're communicating um, via Zoom at the moment, but once every couple of months, I'm going out to see them work on a different thing and that sort of stuff, but there's nothing majorly wrong. You know, like I might say, look, this month, um, you've got 600 balls to bowl, and I'll put that in a, in a week um, with regard to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they do technique work. So that's very specific. And, and that's more a chance for them to get an idea of if they want to, Get to the next level this is sort of you know pre-season training leading in 
next month is gonna be a really big month for bowling and then taper off into the season. With regard to the courses, they've been really well received. Probably the biggest component is, is school cricket. So in my courses, I can create little bits and pieces. So for example, I've got a, an eight week course for, my, for the, the schools in Australia. And all that is, is eight weeks of bowling and, and batting against spin. So the second week, so the first week, we're bowling uh, against batters, learning how to defend against spin. And the batters have to learn how to defend against uh, the ball. So you're both two, two birds with one stone. That, and that's going to be, I think, you know, like week three is learning how to sweep. So I have to learn how to bowl against a batter that's sweeping. And then they have to bat against a, a bowler who's practicing that sort of thing. So that sort of stuff's going really well. Uh, and then I've got an overseas, an overseas sort of program, which is 12 weeks. And that's just a mixture of, you know, 12 different ways of, you know, bowling, uh, standard ball, uh, cross seam, round the wicket, all that sort of stuff. And it just explains everything, goes through, and it gives them an opportunity. And then when they purchase it, they've got that, you know, all the time. You know, just a one-off fee, they have it. And, but that's, it's, been, it's been really cool. I've really enjoyed it. You know, like I don't, as I said, I don't have enough hours in the day to see everybody. You know, I would love, I've got a lot more goals to create like a, a little YouTube channel where I can answer questions and, and post my answers so that I get so many questions each day on Instagram, especially from Asian countries like, hello, can you help me with my action? And they send through their videos and I'll reply when I can, but I would love to be able to, to make that a bit more and, and help out where I can. So then, you know, look, they don't get the access that we do with coaches and stuff like that. But, you know, I just want to make sure that at least I can give something back and they can enjoy and, and continue to grow. Exactly. So, uh, Nathan, uh, John over here has close to 150 uh, players who are looking at this particular video after the, you know, this particular session goes live. So Okay, cool. Very nice. <laughs> so, uh, let's first have a little bit of interaction, uh, inter interaction between him and then we'll get that to those questions. So, John, yeah, uh, Nathan, uh, let's talk about you. I don't want you to. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Hello, John. I'm very well, mate. How are you? Yes, I'm fine by the grace of Almighty. So, uh, <laughs> Nathan, first of all, uh, I'd like to congratulate on uh, your newest venture, that is the Spin Bowling Clinic and uh, Spin Bowling Academy. Sorry. And uh, you are doing a wonderful job by training the amateurs, by training the, uh, you know, uh, by nurturing the new talents. And that is what we are doing with MCL. I'd like yeah. to tell you a bit, I'd like to introduce a bit uh, about MCL. That is yeah. Maratha Cricket League. It is India's first cricket reality show where we are uh, nurturing the undiscovered and amateur cricketing talents across India. And in this particular process, we have came across around 10,000 uh, young and amateur cricketers across India. More than 10,000. 10,000. 10, yes. More That's than 10,000. That's amazing. <laughs> Those, those who are not into professional cricketing uh, arena. And uh, now we are training them, uh, we are nurturing them, we are providing them a platform where they can showcase their skill in front of the world as uh, Maratha Cricket League is about to be live telecasted in coming months. So, <clears throat> as uh, Said brother told you, he is also a part of our uh, advisory board. Yeah. He's officially uh, a part of uh, our board. And... Uh, me, myself, I am representing Maratha Cricket League as Chief Executive Officer. Yep. And I was a fast bowler. I mean, uh, I was a bowler, yeah. brother. <laughs> yeah. nice. by, by nation. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking about you, Nathan, uh, you know, in the test, test match against India in Mumbai, uh, I mean, you came as a surprise. <laughs> by, <laughs> and you took the wickets of Sachin Tendulkar and VVS Lakshman. My God. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I mean, at, at that moment, I was, I was, I was like, you know, uh, I was uh, in uh, such a state of mind. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that test. Sachin Tendulkar hit me for the biggest six of my life. It was like seriously, he, he was such a little guy, but he went so far. It uh, it was that wicket at Mumbai. Uh, it was just one of the craziest wickets I've ever played on, and I just remember. Yes just the crowd and everything it was uh, it was the greatest experience of my life i've always loved going back to india it's, it's such an amazing place you you have done it very gracefully in your first debut match you uh, claimed a five wicket haul i guess and well, uh, yeah, i was pretty lucky i was pretty lucky look i um 
Oh, you know, look, Sachin, I think, was getting bored and top edge one. VVS, you know, look, he just mis miscued one. But I bowled okay first innings. Second innings, I probably didn't bowl as well. But, yeah, it was just amazing. Michael Clark took six for nine. So, uh, you know, it was pretty crazy. But being an Indian, we were very afraid of you. Why you took the wicket of Sachin Tendulkar in that particular match? <laughs> but we love you, Nathan. We love you because uh, Thank you. Uh, you 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 have shown the you know you have shown the people how uh, not to uh, you know compromise with the dreams. Because I I observed that you uh, have faced a lot of injuries in your career, and that was yeah. the you know the major uh, reason behind your uh, disconnection with uh, cricket somehow. So. <clears throat> Now also, I mean, uh, you are the person, I salute your uh, dedication uh, towards the cricket. You are the person who has overcome those uh, obstacles. And now you are, uh, I mean, you're more than a mentor for the new, new player, new uh, upcoming talents. And that is what makes you special, Nathan. So I literally, uh, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate your passion towards cricket. That's so nice to say. Thank you very much. And look, the, the big thing that... that I try and give out of my academy is just to make sure that, you know, the kids dreams, you know, like they can always keep dreaming no matter where they are in life. You know, look, I'm not a massive social media person, but I know that social media is part of life, but I, I really want to make sure that when I'm working with kids, it doesn't matter what age they are to always have that dream and belief that they could maybe get there one day. You know, it's not my job as to coach to say, look, you're not good enough. It's my job to like help do what I can. And then I, I love, you know, like, Indian people, they would, they would play cricket 25 hours a day. You know, like in Australia, there's so much other stuff they probably don't. But I love the passion and everything that's associated with people that want to reach the highest level. That's why when I get the questions on Instagram from, you know, the Asian countries, Indian countries going, sir, please, please do this. I like, I love seeing that, you know, like, and eventually I'd love the platform to continue to grow and, and help. And once COVID settles down, travel the world and, and keep doing that sort of thing, because it's just... I was very fortunate to play for my country and, and I think if you ever get that opportunity, it's, it's something that, you know, you never forget and I want to keep trying to instill that. So, but look, thank you very much for your very kind words. It's very nice. It's a matter of pride, actually, to represent our country in any... Your country, it, it is like, it'd be like top, top dog. <laughs> it's a matter of ultimate pride. It's amazing. A quick, a quick funny question I would like to ask. Why yep. do all the Nathans have to be a hospital? <laughs> except, uh, except for Nathan Bracken. Except for yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. He, look, he, um, he's probably a little bit of a better bowler, but I'm a probably a little bit of a better batter. And he, he's got me in the field for sure. But yeah, there's a few Nathans that are spinners. So mostly all the uh, kids who are named as Nathan Aussies, they tend to turn out to be an spinner. Is that how there, there are, eventually, they will become office winner. As for your theory, for love, for love, brother. <laughs> I would be getting him to bowl leg spin or left arm wrist spin. I, I would, you know, look off spin. A lot of people do it, but it, like I love working with wrist spin and, le and left arm thing, uh, wrist spin. I've got a, a couple kids named Nathan who actually bowl spin as well, so it makes it nice yeah. and easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, coming to a technical question, Nathan. Um, yeah. although, although I have been asking this question to you know, numerous cricket players talking about James Franco or talk about uh, Danny Morrison or whoever. Yep. Uh, this question is actually a concern for all the bowlers, specifically the medium uh, or the uh, base bowlers, that because of this corona guy, uh, situation or the uh, global pandemic situation, ICC has come up with a uh, guideline that states that you are not allowed to shine the ball. Okay. Yep. So, my question to you is like i although i'm trying to understand from different various cricket professionals their thought process as to what is the other way around to this but i, I would like to understand your view as well as to what where does it lead to obviously we know that the uh, uh, cricket is already becoming a batting friendly game there is power play into the picture now that yeah. you're taking away the uh, uh, shine away from the uh, scenario which would lead to no reversing of the ball. So that means, um, obviously, spinners like you would be really happy because all these seniors would be going, going out of the picture. And only once there would be a time that in all that 11, list of 11 players, there would be either one or two seniors. Where yeah. we used to have three to four seniors in a you know, line. So what do you think about it? 
Look, it's, it's a good question. And I, I actually think, I, I think that somehow they're going to use sanitizer to shine the ball. You know, look, I think they're going to find a way, um, you know, we've always found a way, all cricketers have found a way to, you know, make it that little bit shiny or a little bit duller, whatever you need to do. Look, there's different types of sanitizer. You know, look, I used to work in the cleaning business. If you have it um, over about 80% ethanol based, it's really slippery, you know, and I, I don't think they'd be able to use something like that. But if they have it between 60 and 80% ethanol based, it's very thick, you know, and that might be something that they can use on their hands and help them with the ball, you know, because the ball's going to be sanitized all the time. So I've actually posed that question a few times, you know, when is a player going to begin to go, you know what, we're not getting anything out of this. We're going to sanitize the ball or do something because it will become slippery. Um, how they're going to get around with not shining it. Look, I think you're going to see different parts of the body. Like we saw the back being used was pretty disgusting for back sweat. You know, you're going to see arms being used, necks, whatever it needs to be. There'll be bits and pieces of sweat wherever. It's going to be really hard to police. I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. Even sweat is out of the picture, uh, just for your information, that sweat is also not allowed to be used. I believe uh, in this ongoing test between uh, England and West Indies, there was one particular player who was being accused of shining the ball. Now, that's, that is a new accusation which has come into the picture. So, you, so I thought you could still use sweat, so you can't even use sweat. Yeah, you can't use sweat. Wow. Um, look, I, I think it's going to get to the stage like I'll stick with what I'm saying then, you know, they'll find a way with sanitizer, um, you know, to put a little bit, you know, on their pants even, you know, because your hands have got to be sanitized, you know, so um, might trial it and great cricket, see how I go. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, adding to that matter, I, I saw the uh, West Indies players, they were using some kind of gloves, okay, to do the filling and all. Only for the bowling aspect, they were removing those gloves. I really don't understand the logic behind that, but then still, I wanted to understand one particular um, thought process about catching the ball. So let's talk talk about slip catching. We do understand when we have quicks like you know who are one fifty yeah. plus, like when you're talking about Sean Tate, Ashwin, yeah. or you know whoever is bowling at uh, one forty plus. If yeah. that guy kind of uh, nicks the ball. There, there used to be certain scenarios wherein the ball used to slip out of the hand. Let's take a, a famous example of Virgil Gibbs during the World Cup of 1999. Yeah. So it was, a, you know, a, a, a pro practical example which I'm talking about, wherein the ball just slipped out of the hand for no good reason. But because of these gloves, it would create some kind of gripping to the ball. So again, somehow it is helping, uh, you know, the fielders and not helping the ball. Yeah. It, it, look, it, it's just going to be, I, I think, just a challenge, isn't it? You know, the first first few months of cricket, you know, we've touched wood, you know, hope everything gets through okay and, and there's no more setbacks. And just just going to be trial and error to see what works and what doesn't. You know, whether, you know, it goes down that line of everybody wearing, like, because at the end of the day, the bowler's not wearing gloves, you know, and, and the keeper's obviously, you know, there's so many different things. It's, it's just, it is, it's just such an unknown. And, and the England West Indies is, you know, they're on the spotlight, you know, like they're in the bubble and all that sort of thing. Gotta be so careful with everything. You know, I'm training, coaching people at the moment that are still licking their fingers and bowling and, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, you can't do that. You know, you've got to start to get in the habit of not doing it because you're, you know, you're going to be penalised and you'll be penalised very quickly. And look, it's, you know, hopefully, you know, we're, we're at the end of July Hopefully, in a few months, we might have a little bit more advancement on everything. And there's been a few more uh, cricket series played and a few, few more things trialled. It's just, you know, look, we had AFL and, and NRL over here and everything. Touchwood has been okay. You know, the areas of outbreak has been, but their contact sport, they're, you know, hitting each other, everything. Um, so, it'd be inter it will be interesting to see how our cricket season starts because ours, ours are starting in about six weeks. So, it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Great. And uh, one final question before I move to uh, John, wherein he has this question ready from his players. So uh, I believe uh, we are talking about Austin, you being an Austin specialist. So uh, there is a you know, fair bit amount of help for the left arm off spinner comparing to the right arm off spinner. And there is obviously yeah. a big 
a great help for the leg spinners because the trajectory of the ball comes in such a direction for right handers that it creates some, you know, a major kind of difficulty for them to play the spin bowling of the off uh, left hand off spinner and right hand leg spinner. But when yeah. I'm talking about a right hand off spinner, he had a very hard time getting a dusra or a straighter one. So yeah. usually what I do in my academy is I'll tell, okay, if you have a flatter surface like Mumbai, for instance, where you know, the ball is not doing anything and there are no roughs that you can use to you know, get some kind of extraction from the pitch, then I, use, I tell them that, okay, there is two types of spin. This is the ball. I tell them to use the seam spin or the yeah. surface spin. So for the surface, surface spin, they, so this is the only option which I use for the you know lo, uh, the kids who are upcoming or on the club level. So I'm talking about those kids who are having major difficulties with the ball, not getting the wickets. They are just get, getting bounced all around because they don't have that particular maturity or the expertise to get the dusra or the you know straighter ones. So your take on that, that what is the you know am I first of all am I right on that part and secondly. If there is another way around this. Oh, look, I would have to totally agree with you on that. You know, look, I myself, you know, I had a little bit more of a rounder action. So I wasn't consistently hitting the bottom of the seam. I was a little bit sunny side up at times. So I would skid on and on a good wicket, you know, I was cannon fodder. You know, they didn't, they just could wait on a, on a loose ball. But I knew that if I bowled cross seam, the ball would sort of still angle in a bit more where my natural shape was away. And nine times out of 10, you're going to hit the seam. And based on how you actually bowl the ball. So if you bowl it normally, hopefully it's going to spin normally, but you can actually generate a lot more fizz on the ball, uh, more overspin and stuff across seam. Um, and I'm in the process of, I've purchased like a little, it's like a little revolution gun, um, measures your speed and revs. So I'm comparing me bowling normal seam compared to cross seam and trying to put that into play to go, okay, look, you're playing on a wicket that's not offering a lot. You know, like you can potentially make the cross seam ball your stop ball and then use the seam ball, you know, like what, you know, the standard ball as your change up, you know, and, and use the drift and that sort of thing. The only thing I found with cross seam was you used to tear my finger apart. You know, it was really hard because you're, you're ripping right across the seam. But that's why, you know, like Ajmal, you know, Saclain, uh, you know, Harbajan, not as much. His seam was just amazing. Um, but, you know, like those, those cricketers in those areas in Pakistan, always trying to hit the seam. Admittedly, they had doosras, so it made that a little bit tougher. But when you're hitting the seam, you know, you, you can actually try and ex extract a little bit out of the wicket instead of just like being the same thing, not as much shape. Right, great. So John, uh, I can, uh, I believe uh, you are all ready for the questions of your players. So let's uh, get them running and uh, let's have Nathan uh, share his part of uh, brainstorming. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, Nathan, I'd like to tell you that uh, as I told you, we came across more than uh, more than 10,000 uh, players across India, and then uh, we have shortlisted and shortlisted and filtered the finest 200 participants of MCL T20 season one. And out of those 200 participants, more than 40 players are spinners. Really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's amazing. That's that's amazing. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, especially, I have collected uh, questions from our spinners. Uh, okay. Spinner uh, cool. of MCL T20. So, cool. uh, let us start with uh, youngest player from coming from Gujarat. He is yeah. Abhishek Parekh from Gujarat. Yeah. And he is an off-break spinner. And his question is... A quick question, John. Ball... John, John. A quick Sorry. question. Is this going to be 40 yes. questions or some limited questions? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, uh, his question is, uh, let, let me, let me uh, introduce him once again. He's Abhishek Parak from Gujarat and he's an off-break spinner. His question is, how to ball an arm ball and where I have to pitch it to take a wicket or beat the batsman? Okay, um, so I try and, well, it, it, it really depends on his action. So it's, let's just say uh, someone like Harbajan, who's really high, his arm ball was sort of like a little, um, or I sort of call his arm ball, but like a bit of a moon ball. So um, undercutter type thing. So for someone like him, 
you know, you're pitching back of a length and the idea with the arm ball is you're trying to get them to sweep on a ball that's hopefully just going to skid on it and create a little bit more pace. So in the subcontinent countries, you're not really going to get it to uh, drift and swing much. You know, you might get a little bit in the morning with the, you know, the conditions, but in Australia, you can get them to shape really well in, in the, the T20s and stuff, in the, t in the IPL and all that sort of stuff, definitely. The way to bowl it, I've got a cricket ball here. So I used to hold it, so you can sort of see, so stock ball, that, that's normal sort of stock ball, you know, however you hold it. So if yours is like that, you've got to just turn the stock ball so your fingers, it's not, it's not too much different. And all you're trying to do, you're just trying to come down the back of the ball, you know. So however they hold it, like I know like Harvajan was sort of three fingers, Saclaim was sort of three as well, Mushy, that sort of thing. But you've got to get it to a stage that you only, you don't want to change your action too much and you're just coming down the back of the ball, you know. So you're just flicking it. I'll try and do that. It's a bit hard on the screen, but you're just sort of going like that. And you're trying to land it. You're looking to land it middle and off stump and you're looking to get them to sweep. And, and it needs to be, I, I encourage it to be about four or five Ks quicker, you know, because they've got to pick it up really late. You know, you don't want to be the same sort of pace where they say, okay, that's drifting a little bit, they'll play it like an outswinger. It's just sort of got to gather enough speed, just kiss the wicket and create problems that way. Thanks for your uh, wonderful answer, Nathan. That's all right. So, uh, yeah. uh, Said, brother, I completely didn't understood your question. So that's why I didn't react at that time. <laughs> what you were saying at that time? I was saying that uh, it shouldn't be like 40 questions for Nathan because that will take a lot of time. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. Okay. I have shortlisted it just like we have shortlisted 200 players out of 10,000. In the very same way, I have shortlisted some good questions. That's Anyhow, uh, uh, another question is coming from one of our uh, good players. He's uh, an off break spinner. He's Kunal Nadeshan from Pune itself. And his question is. What should be the plan to get wickets on flat tracks and on grassy uh, and on grassy wickets where conditions don't support a spinner? Well, look, I think they're two different wickets. Like a, gra a grassy wicket, you can you actually can spin the ball, but you generally don't get it because the quicks want the ball. You know, if it's going to grip, it's sort of like uh, like the gabber. You know, if it's grassy, it'll it'll spin. On a flat wicket. It's just war of attrition. You know, look, I always, you know, admired someone like uh, Jadeja, you know, playing against him, watching him on a flat track. Look, he, he doesn't have a lot to his game. You know, when I say that, he's, a, he's an unbelievable player. But he lands the ball in the same spot nine times out of ten. He will, him and Dhoni would set a field accordingly. They might have one in close, a couple other cl uh, catches, guys manning the boundary, so the, you know, the, the four ball, and he would just keep hitting that area. And, like, he might come away at the day two for 80 or 40, but that is on a flat track, that's pretty much all you can do. Or, you know, look, if he's none for 80 or 40, the next morning he's doing the same thing and then bang, bang, he gets a wicket and then he put, they put the pressure on that new batter. And that's how India, I've, they're just amazing at that game. You know, look, they know they can keep doing it. They put a couple guys out. They don't mind playing that sort of game. A grassy wicket, I just think you just bowl normally. You know, try and you've still got to be looking to hit off stump. The wicket's spinning. You know, adjust your line a little bit more. If it's not spinning, try and get over the top of the ball a little bit more, create a little bit more bounce, you know, catches on the leg side. I still always think, you know, if you're, say, if, if a spinner is bowling early on a grassy wicket, the batters will probably want to take you on because they don't want to face the quicks. You know, they want to try and score runs. So it's worth having those couple guys out on the leg side if you're bowling to a right-hander, but still having a short leg and a close mid-wicket and still being really aggressive in what you're doing. That's... That's pretty much what I try and relate to everyone that I speak to. Cool, cool. Uh, thank you for your genuine guidance to the youngest champ of uh, MCL T20. Now, no uh, coming back to another question. This is a question from uh, one special player, Balaji. He's from Tamil Nadu and uh, the most southern part of uh, India. Tamil okay. Nadu. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a spinner as well. His question is, does a spinner should have to bowl the conventional off a spin or keep them mixing, uh, mixing with top spin and boogly to outwit the bat, batsman in T20? The, the consistent message I pass in T20 is you have to be predictably unpredictable. You know, so you need to make sure that you know that, like if, if you don't know the batter you're playing against, you need to stick to your game. You know, like if that's bowling a good pace, back of a length, having your field set accordingly, 
and then you know trying to gauge as quick as you can the game. I think if the one component of the game you've got to be very careful of is bowling too full, like the step and hit length. That's and in India because the wickets are so good, that's what they'll be looking to do. So I think you can get away with being a little bit back of a length, setting the square of fields, bowling stump to stump, that sort of thing. And but if you have the ability to land the ball as a as a standard off spinner and a, a doozer and all that sort of thing, do it. But you have got to make sure you land it. You know, like. There's nothing wrong with being an off spinner and bowling six doosers in a row, you know, because the, the batters, you, you don't, in T20, you know, you, you've got to be looking to, to stay one step ahead of the batter. And, you know, look, if you're bowling to the best in the world, like Virat or AB de Villiers, they're looking to take you down every ball. So you've got to make it your best ball, what you can land, back of the length. doesn't matter if it's six Yorkers, you know, it's your job to get in and out, take wickets, because the, the better you bowl, the more opportunities will come. But, you bowl three dot balls, they'll be looking to take you on. That, and that's why I say just be predictably unpredictable in what you're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderfully answered by you, Nathan. That's so, right, uh, coming to the next question, and uh, the next question is from Ankit Singh. Uh, he's from Indore. And his question is uh, Being a spin bowling coach, what are your thoughts on bowling actions for the new players? And also, what do you prefer? Finger spin bowling or wrist spin bowling? Look, I like both formats. I, I, I you know, look, the, the, I always like working with the wrist spinner, you know, just because of the fact that I'm learning as well. You know, so I'm learning new drills, watching the ball come out of their hand. Like off spin, I'm, you know, very adept, you know, as I grew up with it. But leg spin bowling, I just watched it and, you know, trying to understand the mechanics. With new... Spinners, for me, I don't try and change too much, you know, of their action unless there's something majorly, majorly technically wrong. So, you know, if they're bowling across themselves, if their action is very, very high, that but I like to stick with their natural elements because that's, you know, that's what make their job easier. What my job is from there is to get that natural action consistent at the other end. So just need revs on the ball, landing in the area, you know, 70, 80% of the time, and we just keep working toward that. There's different drills, different things you can do. But as soon as you, like, it's very hard, you know, like if there's nothing majorly wrong, you know, you don't need to tinker too much. It's just repetition, landing the ball, giving faith, you know, like going, you know, trusting, just trusting that it's, it is going to come. It's not going to happen in this session. It might be the next one. But you keep working on the right things, you know, basic things, you'll be fine. Because the reason why, like, you, you're a good spinner for a reason. You know, like, yeah, as long as the ball's in the right shape the right way, you know, we're 50% of the way there. If it's not, then I'll work on that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, wonderfully answered, Nathan. Now, uh, coming to some uh, questions that is uh, precisely non-technical, and uh, it is about you. Uh, so the question is from uh, one of the players, Lokesh Patil, he's from Dhule, Maharashtra. And his question is, uh, have you ever thought giving up on cricket? And if yes, then what kept you motivated? I, I definitely gave up on cricket when I retired. I was mentally done, physically done. I didn't enjoy the game. I just, um, you know, look, it was really tough at the end. I, I was really just mentally just exhausted from cricket. Um, I probably had 18 months out of the game. Of, I just watched a few games. I hardly watched it on TV. I didn't really do much at all. Look, and I think what got me back into the game was coaching, you know, and, and just helping out, doing little bits and pieces, just, you know, a little one-on-one -on -one session here and there. Yep. Yeah, so I I stopped playing, I retired, gave, gave everything away for about 18 months, literally struggled to even watch cricket. And then I slowly got back into, I, I still missed it. You know, look, I, I, you know, I would be quite upset talking to, you know, the memories that I had. It was really hurting that I'd you know, I didn't really, not honour it's the right word, but I just hated talking about it, you know. So then coached a little bit some more. And then probably 12 months ago, I started playing again a little bit. And I had a lot of excitement seeing young kids enjoy, you know, landing the ball in the right spots or hitting a good shot. So I started to get my enjoyment back. And, and then six months ago, I had this, the idea of doing this academy. I didn't know how it was going to look with regard to being online or, or whatever but um you know probably covid pushed it a little bit more online than what i thought i was going to do but i, I loved what i loved my decision i, I loved 
doing it now and you know look i've a lot of different visions for what the, what angle i want to go with it and as i said i want to travel and, and do that sort of thing but you know the most important thing that i love is being able to give a young kid or young cricketer the opportunity and, and belief that they can do it you know look, i really enjoy doing that quite inspirational nathan quite inspirational thank, thank you. you thank you, Mate, uh, thank you. another yeah. question is uh, from one of the player of mcl t20 he's harshwar Dhan Khernar from Dhule, Maharashtra. And his question is, did you ever try to sledge any batsman just to fluctuate the focus of the batsman who is in the full flow? If yes, then who was the batsman? International cricket. Um, I reckon Andrew Strauss. I, I might have said a few words because I played a one-day series against him. I got him out six out of seven times. And he tried to play a reverse sweep against me. I, I, I don't, at that level, I've never really had the belief that I was good enough. So I was very quiet. I was just doing my job. And I might've said something cheeky, you know, like, uh, so you, you can't hit me now. Now you have to try, because reverse sweep was only just sort of coming in. So he had to try and play a reverse sweep. And then he got out a couple of balls later trying to reverse sweep again. That would probably be pretty close to the only time I've ever really said anything. Um, in grade cricket, shield cricket, I was always saying something, but, uh, international cricket i just kept my mouth shut and did my job <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good uh, even uh, i mean as i have watched you uh, you were being a very silent and uh, you know uh, a very silent sort of player and uh, which is which is a sort of exception in uh, you know exception in australian uh, cricket team so yeah, you, no, you i you like being <laughs> you are completely an ex exception in Australian cricket team, you know. So uh, it was I think it, I think it's when you, you know, look, it's, it's it's sort of like a bit of bravado, that belief, you know. And, and I, at that level, you know, I, I've always sort of felt I was looking over my shoulder at the next game. So I never really sort of let my game. I was always just sort of not at my full potential. So that's how I sort of felt. You know, when I get back to the the, the lower sort of levels, and I was still really strong. I felt I could get any batsman out. Whereas international cricket, you know, if I'm bowling against Sachin Tendulkar in a good wicket, I'm like, oh man, how am I going to get him out? You know, so the battle in my mind was already sort of half over. You know, when you get, and that's that's the big thing in cricket. You know, like they're just as you know, they are probably better, but there's no reason why you can't compete and do a good job either. So that's probably why I wasn't as as chirpy. Yes, Nathan. So uh, the last question which I want to ask you. Is yep. from uh, the question is from Yogesh Meena. He's from Jaipur, Rajasthan. Yep. And his question is, who was that particular batsman who made you nervous? <laughs> Out of <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Look, um, definitely uh, Murali VJ. He was a very good player of spin bowling. I found him really hard. Sachin, Virat. Um, VVS, so that that's just from you know that's just some of some of the Indians Indians. Um, uh, Ab De Villiers definitely made me nervous. Brian Lara, um, Yunus Khan from Pakistan because he could just play me very easily. You know, look, he was he was unbelievable. Super batsman. Yeah, he was unbelievable. Ross Taylor from New Zealand because he used to just look at yeah. me for six. Aaron Finch. He just looks to load me up every ball. Uh, Steve Smith, you know, look, he's the same sort of thing. Um, you know, look, that, when you're bowling against those guys, you got to, you know that you've got to be on your game. Like, a, it's a really strong challenge. You've, you've got to be up for it. You know, if you're 1% off mentally up for it, you know, not up for it, you're, gonna, you're already behind the game because they're just looking to unload on you. Chris Lynn is another one. Bowling Chris against Lee. him. Yeah, he's, he's one. He used to, every time I played him, he would just hit me for fun. You know, so, um, you know, the boys, the boys getting the ball big. Look, I think I'm a, I actually think I'm a better bowler now than what I was when I played because being in this, doing all this stuff with the academy, I'm bowling every second day and I'm working on different scene positions, different wrist positions. And my consistency now is actually very, very good practicing. Whereas back then I wasn't, you know, I was very much just trying to land the ball in the right spot. Whereas now I'm trying to spin it and be aggressive. So I am playing, you know, Body holds up. I am playing great cricket this year, so I'm looking forward to seeing how you know it all pans out and and, and how I, how I can still compete. And you know, I have missed bits and pieces of playing for sure. Uh, if we speak precisely about thank you for your answer, Nathan. 
if we speak precisely about uh, the players of indian subcontinent it is well known that they are very comfortable uh, while playing spin bowling so uh, i mean uh, not only the indian subcontinent i'll rather say the pakistan uh, the players from pakistan and from uh, sri lanka as well uh, we, we we you know uh, i'm i'm not claiming it at all but yes it has been they they have been known uh, to play the spin bowling uh, i mean they were they were very comfortable uh, with the spin bowling at that particular era from which you belong so uh, unbelievable. Yeah. unbelievable they they grow up you know look they besides they grow up, they just they just have a different way of playing it you know look they just go against the grain about what we're sort of taught you know they don't mind hitting against the spin a sweep from the stumps, all that sort of thing. It, it just doesn't phase them. They don't have fear, whereas we have a lot of fear about batting against spin. And it shows when we go over there. It takes time. I think we've improved a lot over the years, but just leaps and leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else in the world for sure. Nathan, have you bowled uh, Saurav Ganguly? He was the best batsman who used to play uh, spin ball in India at that time. I reckon I, in my debut test, I might have bowled a couple balls to him. Not, not many. Um, okay. I, th- I think I did. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't. I didn't ever play against him in a one day or anything. But I, you know, look, he was unbelievable to watch. You know, every time that he was playing the game, he was, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of many others as well. As already, your job was done in the debut test, as you uh, directly hit the bull's eye. Sachin Tendulkar and Devious Lakshman at that time. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Look, no one can ever take that away. Getting Sachin out, so I'll um I'll always remember that. I, the, I, you know, look, I don't have the greatest memory in, in the world, but I will never forget the delivery and how it was caught and how I felt or anything like that. It's uh, just something that'll stick with me forever. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Thanks a lot. Uh, one thing I want to tell you, uh, as uh, I mean, I have. Uh, studied about you like uh, you 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 <laughs> you have came across a lot of injuries and a lot of setbacks in your career but now as you emerged as a mentor it requires a lot of mental strength man and i'd like to tell you uh, something about the poster which which is just behind you i think it's a bull right yes it is yes it's a bull it's yes a bull. yeah it's a symbol of strength and power so okay, uh, okay. very nice I've, yes, I've actually so. actually got asked that the other night. Um, a, one of my young kids, he's like, "Oh, why do you have the bull?" And I was said, "Well, it's just my wife. It was just a painting that she got." So, it's uh, very nice. Well, I'm I'm happy to take that strength and power. Yes, uh, it is a symbol of strength and power. And uh, by looking at you, you are a very decent and silent personality. I loved speaking with you. Very calm Thank in you. nature, Thank and. You. Uh, you know what is what is in your mind and what is your mental strength uh, strength that is getting reflected by that poster so i can so i can understand your mental ability i can understand your mental strength nathan and i literally salute that uh, you one one should learn that never uh, you know never to give up whatever happens whatever matters in life never ever give up so uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot for motivating the amateur new cricketers no, look, thank you so much. That's so very, very kind words. And, you know, look, when you say never give up, that's actually been my father's motto to me, you know, in life and, you know, never, ever give up. And, you know, you're always doing your best. But, look, thank you so much. And, you know, look, what you're doing is, is pretty amazing as well. And I can't wait to, to watch that. And when you say there's so many cricket, like in cricket in Australia at the moment is struggling a little bit just with, um, you know, the numbers. There's so many other sports. You know, I would love to have to cull down 10,000 young spinners to, to look at and see how they're all going. <laughs> I look forward to seeing actually, the development. Yeah. Actually, Nathan, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, like uh, these 10,000 players uh, whom, I mean, uh, who uh, tried to, you know, uh, book a seat for MCL T20, yeah. they were not professional cricketers. They were not professional cricketers. All of them were amateurs. All of them were undiscovered cricketing talents, those who are not having any platform. And uh, these 200 cricketers whom we have shortlisted and filtered for the final round and who will be playing the league actually. These cricketers are, you know, uh, they are talented enough. They are talented enough, but they are not having any platform. So, Maratha Cricket League, we are, we are uh, coming up with the aim just to focus on the undiscovered uh, talent, just to focus on the amateur talent. And for their uh, and to nurture them, because uh, I mean cricket is everywhere in India, but platforms are very restricted. So that's why this is an initiative. 
and we all uh, need support from uh, all of you guys those who are already internationally active in cricket and uh, let us see uh, how it will work let us see by the grace of almighty we are moving forward despite of this corona virus pandemic we are moving forward earlier it was yeah. scheduled in india now we are looking forward to host it in some other country uh, which is you know where where the corona virus uh, risk will be uh, less than uh, as compared to india so yeah, we are yeah. looking on that aspect as well. Well, well, look, I, I wish you all the best with it. You know, look, I, I can't wait to see it. And, you know, any way that I can help out, just, you know, feel free to, to keep in touch. I can't wait to see it and can't wait sure to unearth, you guys to unearth like the next Anil Kumble or Harpajan or someone like that. That'd be pretty cool. Certainly, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Nathan. All we right. will you, be John. happy to see you with us. We'll be happy to get uh, any sort of assistance from you. We'll be regular in touch. And uh, Said brother is there. <laughs> Said Prabhupada is also a part of MCL T20. Um, uh, not a part of MCL T20. In fact, he's advisor of MCL T20. And <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's like my elder brother. He is my elder brother. And he's my advisor as well. Oh, so, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, uh, Definitely. Before, uh, before we go ahead and conclude the session, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I would uh, you know, like to wish you all the best of luck for your comeback. Um, after uh, after after Liam Plunkett, after uh, Ashish Nehra, and obviously after AB De Villiers come back, I would really like to see Nathan Horrocks come back as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be an add on. Oh, no. Yeah, so I would really be you know excited to see you on screen performing once again as we always used to do, and obviously um, whenever uh, wherever the opportunity arises from our end. I would obviously like uh, look forward to fit you in so that we would be always in touch and we'll be always been connected in uh, all specific ways, be it personal, professional or cricket, however we can help you out or you can help us out, however we uh, complement each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, one final thing which I always keep telling all the uh, you know uh, guests, which whoever comes on this particular show, is that you are always invited to my academy, my campus, and a good dinner at my house whenever you drop down to India. Cannot wait, mate. Yeah. Let me tell you, my wife, we, she's already on the plane, so she loves India. We'll, we'll be there with bells on. So it, uh, I, we, we both love it. You know, we'd uh, love to get back there as much as we possibly can. And as I said, you know, with this sort of thing, love to be traveling around the world and, you know, doing camps, you know, helping out wherever I can and just, you know, just spreading the word and having fun. Great, great. One more thing which I usually add after uh, Said brother's statement. Uh, Nathan, you are also, uh, I mean, you are uh, most invited from my end as well. And after having dinner at Said brother's home, you'll have dinner with me. So whenever you are here around in India, in the western region of India, please visit uh, our office. Please visit, uh, visit to MCL. Uh, have a look to the players and you'll be yep. astonished. You'll feel happy. And yes, we all will have dinner together. And it was really a superb speaking with you. A nice conversation though. And Beautiful. Thank a lot you very of, much. Your, a lot of good luck for your comeback, Nathan. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. All right, Nathan. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend ahead. Cheers, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks, guys. You too. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.